All right, everybody, this is Ross. In today's video, we're gonna talk about the fall weather that we've been having. It's been very cold here in the Northeast and um, here in Pennsylvania. It's been unseasonably quite cold for this time of the year. And how is that cold, those colder temperatures, how are they affecting um, the figs? Um, not just the tree itself, but the actual fruits. So some of you guys, it's really quite strange. You guys may have actually had a frost at this point. Today is uh, the 20th of September. It's not even the solstice yet. So we're technically still in the summer. Although I argue here in this climate, around the 15th of September every year, like clockwork, a switch is flipped and we're now into the fall. But uh, this is quite extreme because last night, I think it got down to 41, it said. Uh, the forecast for tonight is going to be 41. So those are really cold nighttime temperatures and that really makes a big difference. Right now it's about 60, uh, 61 degrees, somewhere around there. That's not horrible for a daytime temperature. It's not great. Um, this is certainly some of the temperatures that we should be seeing probably around mid-October, um, maybe, maybe even late October, early November, and that we would really, I wouldn't be shocked if we saw a frost just based off of the weather that's been happening. I wouldn't be shocked if we saw a frost come in here. Like it's, it's really been insane. And th that would be, if we did see a frost, that would be the earliest abrupt end to my fig season that I've ever seen. Um, the fall weather here is very unpredictable, which is why I really advocate that anybody growing in a shorter season, a colder season, we're always trying to get our figs, guys, to form at an earlier date, at, at the height of our season. What's the height of our season? Really the driest and the warmest time of the year. If we can get more figs to ripen then, for me, it's really like every year I get like a one or two week window that gives me the best quality possible. That really rivals figs that are grown in California. So I've been spoiled, right? I've had the figs from California. I have had many figs now at really high quality during that week or two week window where the fruit quality is just out of this world. I don't grow figs personally to be ripening them now or in this, these conditions, I should say. This is a, the quality here is really, really suffering in terms of the fruit because of these colder temperatures. And specifically, it's even worse when you're growing them in containers. So the uh, container culture, here's the big difference. You have a, a two week head start to the season by growing them in pots, but you have a two week earlier end to your season by growing them in pots. So the, the in-ground trees, believe it or not, they have a more stable soil temperature right now than these containers do. Because the containers are above ground, they're not buffered by anything that's keeping the, the soil temperature more stable. Whereas the ground certainly is, it's a more stable temperature over time. So because we saw 41 degrees last night, the root zone temperatures, the soil temperatures of these trees have significantly decreased. And it happens quickly, right? They fluctuate rather, um, you know, rather wild, right? It's a pretty big fluctuation in temperature, like I said, versus the in-ground trees, which are kind of like a steady decline over time. So it's, in a sense, it's better to have in-ground trees, I find, if you're gonna be ripening your figs, I guess, later into the fall. And these soil temperatures really are everything, guys. This is why we talk about them so, so much. Now, what do these decreased soil temperatures do for us right now? Um, how are they affecting the tree? How are they affecting the, the fruit itself? Well, the tree is certainly preparing itself if it hasn't been already. A lot of this growth here has stopped. Almost none of this has continued to grow um, on these more mature trees. Simply because I try to control the water as much as possible, we don't want to be feeding them all that much. So they have kind of slowed down over time, but this is giving them really an abrupt stop to their metabolism. Just like us as humans, we perform at an optimal temperature. It's the same thing at the soil level. These guys have really started to slow down. 
And what does that affect? Well, it affects the root growth, it affects the actual growth, it affects the lignification. It affects any biological process, really. So if you can think about us as humans, right, if we're really cold, our bodies are not going to perform very optimally, right? If we have a fever, our bodies are really trying to be in that homeostasis to get us back to that right temperature so we can perform optimally. It's the same thing with these trees here, guys. And the fig is really one of those trees with a higher soil temperature requirement. And I like to argue, it's not like you're not going to see any activity you know, at 50 degrees Fahrenheit or 60 degrees Fahrenheit, but really anything below 60 at the soil level, almost nothing happens. I mean, it's pretty, really low metabolic rate. You know, until you get to 70, until you're at maybe 78 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, that's the most optimal soil temperature is 78 degrees Fahrenheit. It's a really big difference and every degree of difference is huge. Um, so really you can imagine the difference between 78 and 70 is quite big. It's even bigger between 70 and 60 and it's even bigger between 60 and 50. So right now I haven't taken the soil temperatures but I imagine if it's 41 last night and it's been consistently colder now at night, um, it's definitely been in the 50s and it's been um, in the 40s here at night. I can guarantee you that the soil temperatures are probably really around 50, maybe even a little bit low th lower than that if it's getting to 41. What's worse is that this is compounded by the fact that the sun is not hitting the soil. It's not warming up the soil. It's not warming up the pots because in the fall, this whole canopy is already fully leafed out. It's already the, the pots, the soil is already completely shaded um, versus let's say in the spring when there's very little canopy and the sun is actively hitting the, the soil to help warm up and uh, increase the metabolisms of those trees. So it's even worse, I guess, in the fall. Another thing that happens with the fruits is that they're ripening a lot slower. So we talk about hang time a lot when we talk about different varieties. And the hang time is just essentially how long the, the figs have to hang on the tree before I pick them. And let's say I have a variety that takes about seven days for it to ripen to perfection normally. But now it's in the fall when these temperatures have really significantly decreased. That seven days, instead of being seven, goes to maybe 10, 12, maybe even double the amount of time it would take. So they're really, like I said, metabolically very, very slow because of this. Additionally, any of the figs that are ripening right now, they're going to have more resin. You're going to see more sap flow in the fig unless you can really let it hang. Uh, <coughs> excuse me, guys. <laughs> you can really let it hang for a long time. Um, it's going to have a lot of that sap flow, a lot of that resinous flavor, and also it's going to be a little bitter. The skin's going to be a bit bitter here in the fall. You'll end up seeing that um, pretty consistently, not on every variety, but certain varieties will show it more than others. In terms of, like I said, the the metabolic rate, you're not going to even uh, produce roots very quickly. So if you have things like air layers on your trees, you're just not going to uh, finish off your air layers in time. Um, if you don't have good lignification at this point, we're not going to have great lignification going forward. Uh, and then when that frost comes in and actually knocks off the leaves, you have no more lignification. So it's basically over at that point and whatever you have at this point of the season is what I keep harping on you guys is that this is it in a way you know I still have plenty of figs to ripen a lot of this is due to just our poor season that we had this year a lot of experimenting that we did without you know with no pinching as an example we're behind and it's really quite a shame um, <clears throat> how the season just basically progressed for me this year it's not a total loss I'm not totally negative about it, but this is one of the worst years I've had growing figs so far. Um, and the, the fall weather is so variable year to year that you just don't know what you're going to get. So I always recommend to you guys that are new, because if you don't grow figs for at least three or four years and go through 
many fall seasons to know what's the fall like? What's the fall on an average year going to be like? How is that going to affect the figs? You just don't know. Um, it's hard to really know in that situation. You know, how can you know something? How can you be empathetic to something unless you've gone through it, right? So <clears throat> that's why I tell you guys so, so often for us in these shorter seasons to get this whole thing going from the beginning. Get it off on the right foot. Get everything pinched. Get, um, you know, the certain amount of growth. Don't be like, oh, I'm going to have a million figs on my trees and that's what you're going for. You want the earliest figs possible every single year. You're not supposed to hope for the best year possible. The best year possible was last year. And that was a great year because it was, it was warm, it was dry in our fall for most of the fall. Um, but that's really one out of every five years, one out of every seven years it felt like. Really since I've been doing this, that was the best year. Uh, and that was you know by far. I've had other falls, guys, other years where it's just rained. It just rains the whole fall. Um, you basically don't get any fruit in that situation, you know. Um, in this particular situation, at least it's dry, you know, but it's so cold that any of these figs that are left on the tree, you know, I'm going to have, let's say, if I needed really another, let's say I needed another month of good temperatures to ripen out the rest of the crop, right? I still have plenty of figs left on these trees. So if I, <clears throat> as an example, if I, Let's say I need a whole month to finish this crop here on my uh, Verdino del Nord. I don't know how long exactly, but let's say this one here is probably about three weeks left. Um, I imagine if, the, if these temperatures keep up, it's going to be a lot longer than that. I mean, I still have plenty of figs on, these on this tree. So instead of three weeks, we're now looking at maybe a month and a half, maybe even uh, two months to the point where we would never even finish the crop on this tree because a frost would come in. So that's how I look at this. Yeah, you got, let's say you got 300 figs on your tree, but how many of them did you actually ripen? I mean, <laughs> how many of them did you actually ripen also at the time of the year when it matters, when these figs actually taste good? You know, there's so many people who complain about their figs not tasting good. Well, it's like, you know, they're a very variable fruit from year to year. They take a long time to mature, but also you gotta have the right weather for these things. You gotta have temperatures. You gotta have some soil temperatures here, guys. If you don't have that metabolic rate, you're not producing the carbohydrates needed through photosynthesis to basically give these fruits the, the sweetness that they need. You just, don't, you just don't have that metabolic activity of moving those carbohydrates into the fruits. So how, I don't know how people can even really complain um, if they're not doing all the things I just mentioned, you know? Um, it's just, it seems a little bit unfair to the fig. Um, and this year is a little bit unfortunate just in terms of just the different practices that we, we tried this year to see, uh, you know, expand our knowledge a little bit. So. Yeah, I hope that you guys, I don't know if, I don't think this fall weather is going to continue like it is right now for the rest of the fall. Um, you know, this is kind of probably a preview of what's to come. I imagine we will have a colder fall, um, as I actually have been sort of predicting just because of how warm our summer was. You can only imagine that the fall would be uh, significantly um, colder than normal, but you know, this is in my, in my mind, this is marking a point of the season now where things are really just over for the most part in terms of the figs. So uh, it's a bit of a shame. We're still going to ripen plenty of figs and maybe this is a preliminary end that I'm declaring. Um, but for the most part, for the potted figs, we're basically done. Um, the in-ground trees are going to continue for whatever's left and I'll have a two week extended season uh, versus the potted figs, but that's it guys. So I wanna thank you all for watching this one. Please you know, hit that subscribe button. Let me know you guys, if you guys enjoyed this, you're enjoying the, uh, the information I've been giving you guys all season. We'll see you guys soon, all right? 
Uh, take care and uh, stay tuned, I guess, for more videos that are going to come now in the fall and sort of the preparations that are required. All right, guys, take care.